In 2004, former NFL wide receiver Derek Faison was playing a men's league basketball game. While on the court, he suffered sudden cardiac death. His wife, Regina, who is the guest today, took what she learned from this tragedy and launched the Derek Faison Foundation, which works to put defibrillators in public buildings. Joining us in the discussion, Dr. Anthony Chang. He's the medical director of the Heart Institute at Children's Hospital of Orange County, where he specializes in heart diseases in children. Thanks for both of you for coming. Thank you. Regina, that was certainly a tragedy you suffered. And can you tell us a little bit about your husband, what he was doing, and how it all occurred? Absolutely, Larry. He was actually at playing in a men's league basketball game uh, here in the area. And four minutes into the basketball game, he had collapsed and um, uh, went into cardiac arrest. And uh, by the time the paramedics got to him, it was too much time had passed, and they had tried four times to revive him, and they were unsuccessful. Now, did he have any symptoms beforehand, a few days before? Did he say I was short of breath or uh, having chest pain know, or anything did, like that? He did mention he was short of breath, but he just attributed to being out of shape, and he would say, I have to, I have to get out there and work out more. So he was a... So it was, was nothing... Nothing obvious. He was a professional athlete, ordinary. always worked out, went through his training without any problems and all exactly. his professional career. Yes. That's a real tragedy. Okay. And then what about your, your kids? Have you had them screened? Yes, I do. I have uh, two boys. They're 12 and 14, mm -hmm. and they are, they, they are screened on an annual basis. They get EKGs and echocardiograms just to, to be sure that, they, uh, that the disease does not show up on them, and they have not. And what was the disease that he was labeled with? What, what he, did he have? He had a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or abbreviated HCM. HCM. Dr. Chang, can you tell us, yes, Anthony, what, tell us about what this d disease is and what is sudden cardiac death? Um, well, sudden cardiac death is a sudden collapse in children and young adults during a athletic or vigorous sports event. And the vast majority of causes are cardiac, of which uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a major right. category. And can you show us on the heart model perhaps what sure. that is? Yeah. So here's a model of the heart. I'm just going to open the compartments that are going to show the uh, pumping chambers. Here's the left pumping chamber and the right pumping chamber. And hypertrophic cardiomyopathy involves the thickening of the muscle in the left pumping chamber. Um, so this is a normal heart showing the normal thickness of the myocardium or the heart muscle. And uh, in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, this um, thickness is um, very abnormal. And you can see also on the diagram below, here's the normal heart. And then um, on this side here, you see the thickening of the heart muscle that usually involves principally the left pumping chamber. So hypertrophic means thickened. Exactly. And cardio means heart, and myopathy means heart muscle. So, and the abbreviation is HC HCM. HCM, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So I know you're involved in a lot of screening programs, and so how do we identify this in the, in the population that has no symptoms, and which age groups do you think we should screen? Well, that's a good question, Larry, and I think it's quite a challenge diagnostically because, um, as in Regina's husband's case, um, most of the patients that have this condition are totally asymptomatic. So I think the combination of a very good history, and, and especially the family history, a good physical, and I think uh, most of the cardiologists, especially in the pediatric cardiologist community, are advocating a screening 12-lead electrocardiogram. So a simple electrocardiogram. And how accurate is that, do you think, in picking up this process? Well, the, uh, as in any screening test, the electrocardiogram, unfortunately, is not going to be 100%. So it, and depending on the history and the physical and the situation, we may also suggest an echocardiogram. Yeah, or an ultrasound test of the heart. Correct. And so just to, for in adults, since I'm an adult cardiologist, when sudden death occurs in adults, people over 40, usually it's due to blockages of the coronary arteries or plaque development. So we screen a little differently. We do ultra-fast CT scans, which pick up plaque, because mm -hmm. that plaque can suddenly rupture and close off the artery. But in children and young adults and uh, adolescents, it's more of a congenital problem with thickening of the heart. And there's also electrical problems that occur too, right? That Correct. Are, that you can pick up on an EKG. Right, so there are two other categories um, that uh, predisposes a young person to a sudden cardiac death. Another category, as you mentioned, will be the arrhythmias, and sometimes we can see those changes on an electrocardiogram. Yeah. One syndrome is called long QT syndrome, which some of the viewers may be familiar with. Yeah. And then the third category will be a congenital coronary anomaly, 
which means that the coronary arteries uh, coming off the aortic valve are abnormally formed so that one would not know that there is a predisposition to sudden death until unfortunately the event. So, so what age do you think, obviously any screening test, you can't do it too young and you can't do it too right. old, so you try and find a balance, it's never perfect. What, what ages do you recommend? Uh, well, that's a very, very tough question to answer. Tough, We're just trying to come up with a strategy yeah. and um, a lot of the doctors in the county are trying to come together. And I think we, right now, preliminarily, we will probably recommend before a high school sporting event especially in team sports, mm -hmm. uh, the screening process should happen before that process. So maybe ninth grade, tenth grade, something like I that? I think right now we're probably ready to say that. Yeah. And what symptoms do you think, uh, even before they have a screening, what, what are worris worrisome symptoms that somebody should say, hey, my kid is having these symptoms, I better have him seen now, even before he gets a screening test? Well, or, as you can imagine, um, sudden cardiac death can also occur in uh, young people who are not um, a athlete on a sports team. So anytime that a child has chest pain during exercise, or complaining of chest pain during exercise, particularly during exercise, mm -hmm. and also um, obviously a child who passes out during exercise, or just passes out in general, I think those are two very, very significant warning signs that there may be something that needs to be checked out by a cardiologist. Okay. And obviously screening, even the best screening could not pick up everything. You can still have a perfectly screen and still, and still die of sudden cardiac death. So we need other modalities, and that's where you decided from this tragedy that we needed something like, and I believe that's in the form of these devices. Why don't you Correct. explain what these are? Correct. Well, these are called AEDs, and what AED stands for, Larry, is Automated External Defibrillator. defibrillator and these are life-saving devices. Unfortunately, there wasn't one available in the gym where Derek was playing that night. Um, had, it, had there been one, it could have been a different outcome, but we really don't know that. But in any case, this one here is a Philips mm -hmm. AD, and it's very easy to use, as you can see. I mean, the picture, it has the picture on here. Now, when I pull this open, it's gonna make a sound, so don't worry about that. It'll t actually walk you through and tell you exactly what to do. Begin by removing all clothing from the patient's chest. Cut so clothing if off. needed. So as you can see, it walks you through and tells you everything what to do. Basically, the pictures on the pads tell you exactly where to place them on the victim. You place the pads on the one here and here, and once so that's one on. one here and then one over here. Correct, okay. yes, one up here and one here. And it tells exactly you where, where to go. Exactly where the picture is. And here's the shock button here. So it'll tell you when to administer a shock. It will not tell you to shock a person unless a shock is needed. So if there's no shock needed, this button here will start to walk you through CPR. So this, these devices, they're very, very important. And basically, there's, there's different kinds of ADs. This, is, this one's a Philips. This one here is a cardiac science one. And I'll just warn you before I open this up, it's gonna get very loud. But they basically, they do the, the exact same thing and walk it through. So I'll just go ahead and open it up so you can get a sample of how that knows. It's going to be very loud, so <laughs> apologize about that. Tear but open package see, and remove pads. Yes, here are the pads that show you exactly where Tear it's open package and remove pads. And Peel gonna keep, one pad. It's going to keep saying that until you do it, okay. and then it'll prompt you to the next uh, instruction. So people really shouldn't be afraid of these things because not you cannot all. give a false shock. No. But this is only one piece of the equation because you may not have one of these around, That's right? right? And so CPR is very, very important. Very, very important. And Anthony, why don't you tell us about what, what your CPR program? Yes, and I, I'm glad that Regina talked about EEDs because it kind of segues nicely into a very important part of resuscitation. And I look at AED and CPR as a joint uh, resuscitation strategy. So this is a nice kit from the American Heart Association for families and friends for sort of at-home refresher co uh, course for um, learning CPR. Now it doesn't take, it doesn't substitute for the CPR certification program that you need to have as part of the AHA or other organizations, but it definitely helps you sort of keep uh, refreshed about the whole process. And this, it comes with a nice booklet on CPR, as well as a nice uh, DVD that you can watch on your own. 
and even comes with a mini mannequin so you can practice sort of the technical aspects of doing the CPR. Again, um, I want to just emphasize that once you get certified to do CPR, uh, you really need to practice at home so that when that stressful time comes where you really need to do CPR, that you're not going to be at a loss in terms of what to do. That's great. And Regine, I think with your foundation, do you, you teach c this type of CPR? Yes, actually we do. Um, what we do at the Derek Faison Foundation is we try to increase awareness of heart disease and sudden cardiac uh, arrest through education and uh, mm -hmm. promote awareness. And we do host monthly CPR classes. We sponsor them, so um, you can definitely sign up to take a CPR class through the Derek Faison Foundation. Fantastic. And this is not really a rare occurrence, right? There's been maybe in the past eight yes. months, how many deaths in uh, Orange County alone? Unfortunately, here in Orange County alone, we've had seven. We've lost yeah. seven young lives, kids. It's amazing, and it's probably underreported. Well, we're just about out of time. This, uh, these uh, on our website, we'll have your other websites so people can find out where to get training, how to look up your uh, organization. But I think in Orange County, I mean, we have the wherewithal, and we have people dedicated like you to, to really cut down on this tragedy. Yeah, we try to do what we can. I appreciate both of you guys coming. I think we'll save lives just from people watching this.